Hey guys, this is Todd from Bible Studies and Devotions. Coming at you today with a uh, with a review of the Andrews Study Bible. Someone had requested this. They left a comment and asked if I would asked if I would do a a review of this Bible. So I went ahead and ordered it, and uh, just got here yesterday. And so I'll give you a quick look at it. Now from the box, this is the Andrews Study Bible. Light, depth, truth is the tagline. Key features, 12,000 study notes using the latest in faithful biblical scholarship. Introduction to each book of the Bible with an outline. A unique linked reference system to illuminate great themes of the Bible. 65,000 cross-references and translation notes. 11 in-text maps, 15 full-color and uh, full-color end maps at the at the end of the Bible. Charts and illustrations throughout. Featured uh, feature articles about the inspiration and message of the Bible and how to follow the Bible in daily life. Uh, an extensive 152-page concordance, gold gilded edging, two marker ribbons. Uh, a study Bible you can use, a study Bible you can trust, a study Bible you can share. This is in the New King James Version. This costs $119 for the premium fine leather. And then I'm not sure uh, how much it, it costs for, uh, I think it was $80 or $90 for the other one, the regular leather. And then, of course, they have, uh, uh, sure, synthetic uh, covers or whatever. Anyway, so here is the premium fine leather, the uh, the best that they have to offer. And you can see this is real leather. Even there, you can see a type of uh, a blemish, you know, that was in the uh, the skin of the animal there. Uh, paste down liner here. Okay. Uh, not edge lined. Uh, here we go on the spine. We've got New King James Version, those hubs there, Andrew's Study Bible, and then that uh, Andrew's University Press symbol. That's what that looks like. And these hubs, uh, these are all stamped in. The designs are stamped in. Anywhere there's gold, uh, it's been stamped into the leather, not just uh, not just the gold on top of the leather. So these do feel like they're not actually raised but they feel raised because either side has been stamped down and so it gives the effect you can kind of see there it gives the effect of having it bubbled up and it feels that way and this of course is pressed into the leather uh, along here it's not uh, not stitched along the edge but it is uh, tooled machined there stamped in it's a very, it's a thick piece of leather. It's not, not that floppy. It's uh, fairly, I'm sure it will get floppy with use, but right now, fresh out of the box, not so much. On the back here, you've got the premium fine leather, ISBN. Uh, head and tail bands are black and yellow. There's the ribbons. The ribbons are set down right on top of one another. They both come out the same place. All right, so without further ado, let's open her up and get into it. You've got quite a few pages of card stock and then the uh, presentation page, Andrew's study Bible. Uh, I don't remember what point font this is. I wanna say 10 and a half maybe. And there's all that information here. Contents, uh, list of the books of the Bible, list of maps, list of charts and illustrations, introduction, Andrew Study Bible feature, Andrew Study Bible committee and contributors, Andrew Study Bible publication, preface to the New King James Version, abbreviations, inspiration of the Bible, message of the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, study helps, following the Bible, Bible reading plan, annotated theme index, concordance, and the color map index. Okay, and you can see that some of the, the interesting indentations here on the page. None of this is within the actual text of the Bible. Just on these first few pages there. Interesting. Uh, the in-text maps uh, within the Bible, they have uh, 
11 of those, I think that was. The nations of Genesis 10, Abram's travels to Canaan, the judges of Israel, the Babylonian Empire, Medo-Persian Empire, Greek Empire, uh, Ptolemies and Seleucids. These are this is all these are all in Daniel. Those four, the Book of Jonah, nations represented at Pentecost, the spread of the gospel, churches addressed in Revelation. That's a cool little map, actually. And then the full color maps: uh, the world of the patriarchs, the Exodus from Egypt, tribal allotments of Israel, Israel under Saul, David and Solomon, kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Prophets in Israel and Judah, the Assyrian and Babylonian empires, Persian and Greek empires, Jerusalem, Palestine under Roman rule, Jesus' ministry, the apostles' early ministry, Paul's first and second missionary journeys, Paul's third missionary journey and his voyage to Rome, the spread of Christianity in the first two centuries. These full-color maps appear at the end of this Bible. Onward. Charts and illustrations. Uh, charts and illustrations for the days of creation, Moses' five Objections, the ten plagues, uh, tabernacle, tabernacle furnishings, tabernacle fabrics and garments, types of sacrifices, Hebrew months and feasts, literary symmetry of Joshua, typology of Joshua, era of judges, kings of Israel, kings of Judah, books of the Psalms, dates in Ezekiel, oracles against foreign nations in Ezekiel, relationship of Ezekiel 1 through 11 to Ezekiel 40 to 48. Empires in the book of Daniel, timeline of Daniel 8 and 9 prophecies, relationship of Daniel 11 to Daniel 8 and 9, harmony of the gospels, parables of Jesus, miracles of Jesus, speeches and acts, daily and yearly rituals, events of the millennium. Introduction, give me the Bible, holy message shining. And then light, depth, truth. You hold in your hands in one volume two very important things. The first is the word of God itself, the Bible. The second thing is a rich study system for learning more about God's word. These are two different things, and the Bible is the heart of it all. The Bible stands alone. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken away. No matter what is said or written about it, the Bible is subject to no one but the God who inspired it. Any person who wants to know God and what he desires for humankind must follow the Bible. It is the ultimate word. God's word is light and so on and so forth. Three characteristics. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then this is the, uh, the interesting uh, way that they kind of do chain references for the study systems. The meaning of the name, Andrews. Who that was named after John Nevins Andrews. And that's what Andrews University was uh, named after. Andrews uh, Study Bible features the uh, the version, of course, NKJV. The appearance of the text you'll see soon. It's two column. It is a paragraph in verse style. Now, uh, this paragraph style I do not mind because the 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 verses themselves are uh, in bold. Uh, strong, bold typeface. So it's very easy to find your place if you're looking for a specific verse within a paragraph. Uh, and then you've got uh, section headings, parallel passage notation, added color. There's a lot of blue in this Bible. Book introductions, study notes. Uh, here we go, that chain reference system. In-text charts and illustrations, in-text maps, articles and study resources, annotated theme index, concordance, full color end maps with index. Andrew's study Bible, here's all the, uh, from the committee. And here are the, these are PhDs here, all of them doctorates and PhDs uh, who are contributors, contributors for the notes, for the study notes here. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, PhDs. So you know that there, there is some, a wealth of scholarly information uh, put into all these study notes. And of course, it was uh, rigorously uh, edited and, uh, and uh, revised and, and whatnot so that uh, all the notes are really good. Uh, Preface to the New King James Version, complete equivalence in translation, just like the uh, King James. Okay, abbreviations, 
Inspiration of the Bible, Message of the Bible, a beautiful book, The Story of War. From Genesis 3 to Revelation 20, the Bible pictures a great conflict between the rebellious forces of evil and the kingdom of God. Uh, the good news of God's plan, the gospel changes lives, uh, the gospel and the future. And then we get into the Old Testament itself. Uh, here's what the introductions look like, the title, author, and date, and then content and themes. This will go on to the next page. You can see the content and themes is very large. Uh, and then purpose and literary structure. And then over here to the outline. And then we get into the text itself. And this is what you get. This is what the Andrew Study Bible looks like. You've got the text on top. There's the history of creation. Uh, so there's the little header. These are the parallel passages that speak of this. Uh, other places that are speaking of the history of creation. Uh, and you can see the dark the dark, there's five, a four, five, a new paragraph six, a seven, eight. It's very easy to find whatever verse you're looking for within the paragraphs. So in that way, I really don't mind the paragraph format at all. Here are the center column references, of course. And then here are the study notes. Uh, for instance, for 1-1, one, one, and it has this symbol because this is part of the uh, chain reference system of... Uh, of great themes of the Bible. And this is for the theme of creation. This uh, verse is the theological foundation of Genesis and by extension scripture. God, in contrast to atheism, created alone in contrast to polytheism and rules over creation in contrast to pantheism. Readers are reminded uh, that matter had a beginning as opposed to materialism, and that the ultimate reality is God, not humanity, in the beginning. And then this is how it goes. So now, so that's just uh, talking about the verse in general. And then it's talking about actually when it says in the beginning, uh, introduces the story of creation. The universe has a beginning, God, because God created it out of nothing. Uh, the creation stories of ancient Near Eastern cultures usually require the gods to use pre-existing material. Genesis 1.1 challenges this concept by simply implying that God created from nothing. See Hebrews 11.3. In the beginning, God, so then the, see the dark, the dark italicized, that's uh, referencing now, now the commentary is going to the, the word God. See, in the beginning, now we're going to God. Uh, <clears throat> created the heavens and the earth. And then, you know, so notes about each of these things. Uh, and then for, so for the chain reference system, this is all creation. Then at the end, then you see Genesis uh, 1 and 2 for revelation of God and creation. So this is how the chain system works. Uh, see Psalm 19, 1 through 6 or Romans 1, 20. For creation as the basis for worship. Uh, see Psalm 95, 1 through 6, Revelation 14, 7. Uh, and then the next thing, the Holy, this is part of the Holy Spirit and creation. Uh, verse 2, uh, verse 3, uh, still part of the creation study. And so that's how these reference systems work, and it goes right down 1 4, 1 5, 1 6 through 8, 1 9 through 13, 14 through 19. And so that's how the study system works. The, and the and the, uh, the chain links work. Um, what else? Okay, so for this center column reference, obviously if, if they're full, just with the center column, they go down to the bottom on the right. Uh, usually they're like this, there's a gap. The top references uh, are associated with the left column. Bottom uh, references associated with the right column. And then here's one of the charts, days of creation, day one, light. Uh, Day two, firmament, sky, waters. Uh, three, dry land, vegetation. Uh, and then uh, day four, day five, day six. That's funny, form and then fill. Interesting. And then again, there's more. You do see a little bit of this still here in Genesis, but... You can tell it's kind of going away a little bit. I don't know what that's from exactly, but. And on and on it goes. So that's kind of that's kind of how that works. And here's one of the maps. 
Nations of Genesis 10. And you can see it's just, just black and just blue. Blue is the only color they have in this Bible uh, within the text. So that's what the maps kind of would look like. Uh, here's another map within the text. Obviously, Genesis is a packed book. And then I think maybe Exodus, yeah, 26. You can see stuff like this. These little illustrations of the tabernacle and of the tabernacle furnishings. Just to help kind of give you an idea of what's going on. You can really visualize what's being spoken of. All right. And you can see uh, that's just how it is there. Some pages, this page doesn't have any uh, references at all. No study notes for Exodus uh, 37 there. Uh, and then some are pretty scant. But for the most part, uh, almost every page you get is going to have uh, quite a few notes on it. Pretty scant over here in Leviticus. We'll move on through here. And then I'll, we'll flip over to the New Testament and I'll show you a little bit of that. Uh, the book of Job. So this is how the uh, the poetry is is structured. Uh, they also offer this Andrew Study Bible in uh, the NIV, which uh, I wouldn't recommend as your main Bible. I wouldn't recommend for deep study, ser serious study. But if you want, like a paraphrase, you know, in my mind. I think of the uh, King James and the New King James as something of uh, the actual Word of God. And then things like the NIV or New Living Translation or ESV, what, whatever other versions there are, I think of them more as uh, paraphrases, as men's opinions about the Word of God. Uh, but I like the King James, I like the New King James, because I like the formal equivalents, the complete equivalents. I like to know that what was originally written is what was translated, not uh, this is what was written, this is what I think it means, and so this is what I'm going to translate it as. That is how I think a lot of the translations are these days. They change things instead of just being uh, more of a word-for-word word translation, which the King James and the New King James are, more word for word. I, I, the thought for thought is interesting for devotions and just for reading through to, uh, to see what other people's ideas are about the scriptures, but not as the scriptures themselves. Uh, so all these, the other versions, I like to think of more uh, along the lines of these study notes where uh, they're not infallible. They, they're men's opinions. Okay, and that's another important thing to think of, even though this is very scholarly work, these notes here, all these study notes. Remember, men wrote this. This is not inspired. Okay, this is inspired. This is uh, the thoughts of somebody who has uh, spent many years uh, in schooling, researching, uh, and, and dedicating their whole academic life to the study of the scriptures. This is their thoughts. So these thoughts are definitely valuable, but they are not the word of God and they are not infallible. Remember that. Remember that. But this is like having the wisdom of so many, so many people at your fingertips. Okay, we're almost to the New Testament here. Here we are. And let's just back up a little bit and see what they have in between here. Okay, there's Malachi. And then over to the New Testament, we've got the Harmony of the Gospels. Uh, still Harmony of the Gospels. Still Harmony of the Gospels. Okay, and then we've got the Parables of Jesus here. 
And these are just, this is just listing the synoptics. And then you've got the miracles of Jesus. Uh, nature miracles, healings, uh, exorcisms, and raisings from the dead. And then we get right into the book of Matthew. And we will come over here to Matthew chapter 5. Uh, and seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Uh, then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You'll notice this is not a red letter edition. The philosophy of the Andrew Study Bible is that uh, all scripture is equal. They, they uh, chose not to do the red letter because they did not want uh, any more emphasis uh, being placed on the red letters than on the rest of scripture. This is all the word of God. This whole thing is the word of God. The whole Bible is the word of God, not just the words of Christ. This is all the words of Christ. Holy men of old uh, spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's why this is the word of God. Uh, this is not the word of man. So it's all the words of Jesus. Old Testament, New Testament, red letters, black letters. Okay, so that's how that is. No red letters. Okay, let's flip on over to uh, I did like I did like this little map. Yeah, I like this little map of the churches addressed in Revelation. Uh, churches addressed by John in Revelation, the apparent route of the courier as he delivered John's letters to the seven churches of Asia. Uh, remember when Christ was saying, uh, you know, to the church of Ephesus, write this, I have this against you, but uh, I, but this is great about you, and, and da, 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 da. And this, this is so Patmos is where, it was where John was when he was given this revelation. And then you could see he wrote to the church of Ephesus, Smyrna. Pergamum, Thyatira, Philadelphia, and then finally Laodicea. It's just interesting to see that literal because we think of it, since we're so far removed from this day, we think of it so much in the symbolic now where, you know, we know we are the church of Laodicea. We know that these are the seven church ages, uh, you know, from the time of John until the coming of Christ. Uh, but we forget sometimes that this, is, this all has its base in literal literal things. The, the way God orders things is amazing. Approaches to understanding the book of Revelation, uh, preterists with, uh, with a focus on the past, futurists with a focus on the future, idealists with a focus on the ideas in the book, and historicists with a focus on the flow of history. Uh, interesting. Uh, and then we've got the outline of the book of Revelation, and then we get into it. All right. Now, we'll try to find the end here, and I'll just show you the... It's, it's getting pretty late in the video. Here we go. So, study helps. Following the Bible. Okay, introduction, reading the Bible. Reading the Bible usually has the most benefit and brings the most satisfaction when a plan is followed. Okay, many reading plans. Oh, look at this. Here's a... Uh, it is... Also good to get a grasp of the entire sweep of the Bible by reading it in its entirety. Uh, again, there are many ways to accomplish this goal. The simplest way is to start with the first book, Genesis, and read right through to the last book, Revelation. Many people do this with success. Others get discouraged partway through when they encounter some of the longer or more challenging books, like the end of Exodus. Uh, here is just one approach that gives some variety to how the Bible is read and still accomplishes the overall goal of reading the entire Bible. Read the four Gospels containing the story of Jesus. Read the Acts of the Apostles, the story of Jesus' earliest followers. Read the, story, uh, read the story sections of the Old Testament, Genesis 1 through Exodus 20, Numbers 10, uh, 11 through 17, 13, 20 through 27, 31 through 30, I mean 31 through 33, Deuteronomy 1 through 5, so on and so forth, Joshua through Esther. 
and then read the 21 New Testament letters. Then read the uh, remaining parts of the Bible in order that best fits your needs. The rest of the books of Moses, the Psalms, the Old Testament wisdom literature, Old Testament prophets. Okay, and then studying the Bible, Bible study tools. Uh, talks a little bit about the annotated theme index. Bible study techniques. Experiencing and applying the Bible. Uh, a formal reading plan here uh, with uh, morning and evening readings. Like for instance here, you're reading Matthew chapter 1 in the morning, Genesis 1, 2, and 3 in the evening, so on and so forth. That's nice. And here's the annotated theme index. This is the kind of the chain reference system. Uh, so for instance, the first uh, grand theme of the Bible, uh, the Bible itself, uh, it says the Bible, that's the theme, it gives a little breakdown of the Bible. It's God's word to human beings being a revelation from God himself. It provides earthbound people with insights from a heavenly perspective. Since the Bible is foundational to the study of all other themes, it is important to understand what it says about itself, its authority, and its source. And then it gives a list of of the uh, kind of the, the most relevant scriptures to understand this theme. It's not exhaustive, of course, uh, but uh, you'll have a good idea of what the Bible teaches about itself uh, if you go through all these. And these, this is listed in, in, uh, in order, um, in order of the books from first to last. So uh, Psalms all the way to Revelation. And then the ones with the asterisks are the ones that, that they suggest uh, to begin with. Uh, same thing with the Trinity. According to Jesus, the Trinity is made up of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, unified in purpose. Since the Trinity, or Godhead, is foundational to both creation and the plan of salvation, it is important. Uh, it is an important topic in our understanding of the Bible. And then it gives the relevant passages, and then uh, the best one they, they would say to start at is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Uh, God the Father. Jesus Christ, his person, Jesus Christ, his work, the Holy Spirit, uh, creation, the Sabbath, the covenant, the law, sin, salvation, assurance, judgment, the sanctuary, the church, the remnant, baptism, the Lord's Supper, spiritual gifts, stewardship, health, death, hell, the resurrection, the second coming, the millennium, the new earth. I believe that would be it. Okay, and then we go into the concordance. Three column, three column reference. Uh, includes proper names and significant topics defined by uh, phrases and scripture references. Occasionally, a keyword applies to more than one Bible person, place, or topic. This is the case with Abijah, for whom the concordance lists four different persons by that name. The second, third, and following occurrences are distinguished by dashes. Like this one, dash, dash. Okay. And so here is the one. So this is the first Abijah, second one, second, third, fourth. Okay, so you've got all those. It's a pretty beefy, you know, concordance. I, I would Concordances are almost getting to a point where they're useless since we have phones and they are so limited in themselves. It's so easy with just the, the flick of your thumb to search the entire Bible for, you know, any word or phrase that you're looking for. Okay. And then we've got, okay, the end of the concordance there. Uh, color map index here. And then the color maps, of course, this is, this is on thicker uh, paper, uh, slightly glossy. World of the Patriarchs, uh, Exodus from Egypt. Look at that, you've got a little bit of satellite imagery almost there. Uh, tribal allotments of Israel, Israel under Saul, David, and Solomon. 
you know, we already listed this out, but just so you can get an idea how the maps work. And that's it. And you've got uh, another few pages of uh, card stock to write. Uh, you know, you can write some studies or or notes. You know, the Romans Road. Uh, particularly, I find uh, what what these uh, sections are useful for if you are going to write in the Bible. Uh, witnessing, you know, having. Uh, Writing down uh, verses to share with people, studies that that especially non Christians that you could give to them. Yeah, so that's that's it. That is the Andrews Study Bible. Uh, I would highly suggest this. I love it so far. Uh, I think it's really wonderful. It's a wonderful Bible. It's a wonderful tool. And uh, I think I'll be using this a lot. Uh, whatever Bible you have, you know, whether you get a Gideon's Bible from the local hotel and you know, all the way up to an Andrew Study Bible or a Cambridge or an R.L. Allen or, you know, uh, Church Bible Publishers, uh, whatever you get, Mission Study Bible, Remnant Study Bible, whatever you get, the most important thing is that it doesn't sit around. The most important thing is that you read it because it's not about not about the cover, not about the paper, not about the ink. It's about the words because they're God's words. Get in it. The time is short, my friends. God bless.